are live. Good morning, hacksters. I guess it's afternoon now. It is a dreary day in San Francisco, but it's bright inside and we have a new package to unbox, which I always love. So this is the new NRF5340 PDK from Nordic Semiconductor. It is new today. Uh, I have had to keep this one under wraps, literally. Uh, haven't even opened up the envelope yet. But we'll get to that in a second. Uh, this is a uh, preview development kit for the new NRF 5340, which is a low power chip with dual core uh, ARM Cortex M33 chips. One of them is an application processor that's super efficient, and then the other one runs the wireless protocols and it's even more efficient. Fancy that. Um, it's also got a ton of built in hardware features for security and uh, it supports everything from Bluetooth 5.1, Bluetooth Mesh, NFC, Thread, and Zigbee, which they see as very big players in the IoT of the future. It is designed, it has like a, a really good heat tolerance of up to about 105 degrees Celsius, so it's really good for lighting applications. They're also saying that it's good for wearables and more things like that, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's unbox this thing, yeah. One of the cool things about this is that it's Arduino compatible. So as you will see in just a second, it actually has a bunch of pins. But the the chip itself is available has available 48 GPIOs, which is more than your standard uh, Arduino by far. Oh, cool! We've got an envelope inside an envelope. It, I feel so special. Oh yeah, look at this. So we have, here is the PDK preview development kit. Very cute. Huh. Let's see if I can't get a better angle on this and get rid of some of that glare. Here we are. And I've just dropped the rest of this. Did they send us two? Delightful. Cool. So you can go to nordicsemi.com slash start 5340pdk. Let's see where that goes actually. Uh, Nordic dot com slash start okay maybe it like oh I always type PDF instead Ugh. okay oh yeah okay this goes to the same page that's kind of what I thought um, if you go to the link in the description to this video uh, the first one links to this page and then if you scroll down you'll see an overview of the chip as a whole. Uh, as well as a downloads page with a heart rate monitor demo and some hardware files for it, as well as a getting started section, which is really nice that they put it right up in your face there. Um, one of the cool things about the wireless here is that the Bluetooth mesh combined with the general Bluetooth ability means that you can use a phone to connect to this via Bluetooth and then interface with a whole mesh that way. So uh, I can put these two little guys in a mesh network and control both of them from one phone. Uh, 53 series, Nordic Semiconductor. Here's that link again. They really make it kind of foolproof for you to get started here. Um, yeah, all the different protocols and stuff. Ant Plus. I don't know that one. Time to do some research. Okay, so inside of here, again, we have a really nice, friendly getting started guide. Wow, they really have done a great job of making it easy to do this sort of onboarding process here. Um, and you've got, you know, <laughs> you connect it, you micro USB cable here, and you go to there in your browser. It's really foolproof, I hope. Um, gives you the uh, NFC, uh, or is it? Oh no, it's the Bluetooth Low Energy um, protocol information down here. Bluetooth Low Energy, IEEE A02.15.4, proprietary 2.4 gigahertz, 2402 to 2480 megahertz um, in particular, and um, plus three decibels per meter, is that what that is? Um, <laughs> a bunch of stuff about the radio in different languages. Okay, observe precautions for handling electrostatic discharge sensitive devices. I have observed them. I haven't observed all of them, but I've observed some of them. Uh, cool. Oh yeah, I can run off of a coin cell, I think. 
Here is our little NFC antenna. Look at this guy. Ha ha ha. Come here. There we go. A little flexi NFC antenna that plugs into our board here. This is really nicely documented on the board itself. Just this is a splendid example of how to give developers something really simple to work with right out of the box. Look at this. Everything is labeled. You've got a little plastic tab. It includes its battery, but it's got a little tab so it's not going to run out of bat juice in the box. You've got these little... Look at this! It tells you what the GPIO pin's uh, default functions are. Wow! And which things are short in order to um, activate different functions. You've even got little tiny circuit diagrams here. This is incredible. Wow. Uh, more GPIOs and functions up here. You've got all these little jumpers um, and tons of different ways to connect stuff so that you don't just have a single row of headers here. You also have all the uh, two rows to solder to, which is, oh, no, oh, that's a whole ground row. Wow. So you could easily connect like an LED or something to a pin and then ground or a button to a pin and then ground with no uh, bungee cord or <laughs> jumper wires or whatever. Uh, just, ah, oh, wow, look at that. You could just stick an LED on there uh, or an LED and a resistor. That's so cool. Uh, you've got a little power switch where you can switch between a LiPo battery, uh, VDD and USB. This is the debugger, so you've got a Seger J-Link debugger uh, connection. And then we stick the little NFC thingy in here. Which way up does it go? I bet it goes this way. I could be wrong. Let me guess it goes this way. Um, but it goes in there. And when I plug this in, you've got these four user programmable buttons and four user programmable LEDs up here. Let me give you a little bit closer of a view because I keep moving this around and I think it's hard for you to see. I'm gonna... There we go. Okay, so here's your four LEDs up here. And then here's your four user programmable buttons. And I probably have this antenna for NFC plugged in upside down, but it says Nordic Summon Conductor on the top. So I'm gonna assume that that side goes up. <laughs> And then here's all the beautiful um, GPIOs up here with your whole ground row along the top and along the bottom here. Incredible. You've got your reset button. Very clicky and satisfying. <laughs> You've got two different ports for measuring the power usage. NRF current measurement and debug out. Um, this might be your debug out pin. And then debug in over here. And then uh, you have the external voltage to NRF on and off switch down here. The entire power switch over here. And external supply gets plugged in here. On the back we have our little coin cell. We have our two little debugging guides here. Or, uh, pardon me, guides to the GPIOs. Look at that. That's incredible. That's so nice. Down to the circuit diagrams. It's ridiculous. No one does this. No one does this. And your little solderable jumpers. Wow. Um, and then you have little caps on all your headers and stuff. So these four here are going to be your Arduino connectors. If you compare it here, uh, it matches up exactly to an Arduino Leonardo or any standard size Arduino. And uh, speaking of which, they do actually have a little kit that you can connect to. So if we go back to the main product page, there is... Where is it? Overview. There is the Power Profiler Kit, which goes directly on top and allows you to measure and optimize power consumption for embedded solutions. You're going to program this using the NRF Connect SDK, which is, I believe, open source. I think it's on GitHub. I haven't been able to find the GitHub link, 
but it's really well documented on the page itself. There's all this documentation as well on developer.nordicsemi.com uh, and you just look up the NRF Connect SDK and they've got all this stuff for how to get started with it. There's user guides, there's samples and applications. Do, do, do. Oh, here's uh, Git repositories, let's find out. What does it say? All NRF Connect SDKs are repositories are publicly hosted on GitHub and accessible to both individual users and companies. That's, oh, <laughs> where is it? Send it, give us the link. I'm sure that it's, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, here we go. Yeah, down here, underneath repository types, you've got uh, the fw-nrfconnect-nrf, the main repository for uh, Nordic developed software, and nrfxlib, a repository containing linkable libraries developed by Nordic, as well as a couple of open source software uh, rep repos <laughs> for things like Zephyr and MCU Boat, Boot. Um, which are their own little forks of official open source projects. Cool. So let's take a look at a couple of diagrams here because I happen to have those pulled up. Here is the board itself, um, but also here is a diagram that shows us more about it. So um, if I make this a little bit easier. Yes, there we go. Okay, um, and then in a minute, I'm going to actually plug this thing in so that we can see the demo code, which should allow us to switch between uh, which LED is powered by default. Uh, as you can see, there's a debug out, there's a debug in, power source switch, USB connector, external power source, uh, LiPo battery connector, I missed before, uh, your Seger J-Link uh, OB programmer slash debugger, reset button, NFC antenna connector, uh, buttons, external memory, uh, so that's right here. Uh, the SOC itself, um, an SWF RF port for direct RF measurements as well, forgot to mention that, and user programmable LEDs, so let's take a look at where those actually are. Here's the external memory, uh, here is the chip itself, this is the debugger one again, um, so here's our, our Nordic chip. And then here's where you can plug in to do direct RF measurements. Super cool. All right, let's plug this in. Enough of the talk. Let's get it up and running. Oh, this is a short USB cable. This might be a little tough, <laughs> but it should. Okay, so we've got a blinking light over here. And we also have one pulsing LED over here. And what the documentation said is that I should be able to change which LED is lit by pushing these buttons. So let's try that. Mm, yep, there we go. Ha, cool. It takes just a moment to update. So for a moment, the second LED is lit while the first one is still going. Uh, but yeah, it's a really fast response time. Nice. Well, I'm satisfied with that. <laughs> and then you can use those open source software tools in order to program it with whatever else you want to do. It's going to be available first in an AQFN package with those 48 GPIOs. Let's see what else I have here in terms of documentation, because I think there's a couple other things that they sent me uh, that I would love to go a little bit deeper on. So, um, <laughs> we covered most of this. It, uh, yeah, more about the security stuff. So, this chip incorporates the ARM CryptoCell 312 technology as well as ARM Trust Zone and secure key storage for the highest level of security. With ARM CryptoCell 312, the most common internet encryption standards are hardware accelerated, and ARM Trust Zone provides system wide hardware isolation for trusted software by creating secure and non secure. Uh, execution error areas on a single core. When it comes to the two processors, one of them is a high performance application processor running up to 128 megahertz, uh, 510 core mark, 
with a dedicated 1 meg of flash and 512 KB of RAM. Uh, and then the other one is a fully programmable ultra low power network processor running at 64 megahertz, so half uh, the speed of the other one, uh, 238 core mark, with dedicated 256 kilobytes of flash and 64 KB of RAM, which is still pretty, uh, pretty good. And the, uh, they're both very efficient. There was an interesting thing here that, oh uh, yeah, sleep current. Sleep current is as low as 1.1 microamp. That's ridiculous. Um, the radio has a transmitting current of 3.2 milliamps and a receiving current of 2.6 milliamps, uh, 3 volts DC DC. Um, yeah, the Bluetooth LE and Bluetooth mesh slash thread slash Zigbee operation for provisioning slash commissioning and interaction with a mesh network from a smartphone using Bluetooth LE. We talked about that already. Um, oh yeah, it's compatible with Bluetooth 5.1 direction finding features, which is kind of cool. And uh, the chip operates over a 1.7 volt to 5.5 volt supply voltage range. So you can do LiPos and USB and even this uh, coin cell here. Yeah, the, the NRF Connect SDK, the software, uh, offers a complete solution that integrates this Zephyr RTOS, a Bluetooth LE protocol stack, application examples, and hardware drivers. Tons of examples, it looks like, they're available besides that heart rate monitor one that we saw on the main website. Uh, and then suggested applications, right? We talked about lighting and wearables, but also property tech, location services, medical, smart home, and industrial IoT, things that demand greater computational power with high security, but need to remain compact and highly energy efficient. Oh yeah, there was another cool thing about how uh, it integrates <laughs> some power management stuff that uh, makes it really easy to build smaller things. Uh, so you, you reduce your bomb at the same time as lowering cost. Where did it go? <laughs> Anyway, um, I think it's on one of the public info sheets, so you can easily check that out yourself. Um, all this info should be available on this main kit. You can check out on the right side, there's a really easy giant guide to all the stuff that's included. <laughs> Key features! <laughs> they make it really easy to see what kind of stuff you're getting with this. And then there's a big blue buy now link. So. Yeah, uh, this seems like a pretty cool development kit. I'd love to play around with it. I don't know what I would develop with this, but also I tend personally to not develop a lot of commercial devices. But if you are thinking of building something at scale that would have to do anything with lighting, wearables, and other things that you want to be able to control in a really flexible way, uh, especially sort of home automation type things, um, and ones that talk to each other in like a mesh, uh, and make a lot of them, this seems like a good uh, place to start. So check it out, just launched today. You get to be some of the first people to hear about it. Check it out, new from Nordic Semiconductor, the NRF 5340 and its uh, preview development kit. Enjoy.